This is Chris from Atlantic Outboard, and this is the digital delivery of your new Roballo R302. Now, the first thing you want to do when you get on your boat, come down to your battery switch area, turn both your battery switches to on. Next thing you want to do is make sure your key lanyard is installed. Now your boat will not start without that lanyard. The motors will crank and you'll get an error code on your, your gauge. So you really want to make sure that you have your key lanyard on. Once the key lanyard is on, you can tilt your motors down and you can just fire them off. I like to do that first, let the motor start running while I'm getting equipment on the boat. As you can see on your dashboard, you have labeled buttons, you have your horn, aft bilge. So the bilge pump is hardwired directly to the batteries. So if there was water to get in the bilge and your battery switch was off, it would still pump water overboard. This switch allows you to manually turn the pump on. So if you turn that on and there's any residual water in the boat, it'll pump out that residual water. Then you have your spreader lights. You hit that, it'll illuminate the, the spreader lights off the hard top. You have some courtesy lights that will illuminate the decking. So you can see as you fish or if you're in the evenings cleaning up, it'll illuminate the deck so you're not tripping on yourself here. Um, you have live well lights, self-explanatory. You'll turn on the light in the live well. Underwater lights. Now this is a generic panel. Some of these boats may not come with underwater lights, but you'll still have an underwater light switch. So if you don't have underwater lights, you'll have a blank button. Um, if you do have that option, that's how you turn on your underwater lights. Um, you have map lights, red or white, two different buttons. So up ahead, you'll be able to turn on the overhead lighting, either red or white with those buttons. And then your nav lights for navigation at night. And then you have two blank accessory switches. So if you add more components down the road, um, the installer would be able to tie in the electronics to those blank accessory switches. Over on the port side, you have your freshwater switch. What that'll do is you have a freshwater tank on board this boat that'll service the toilet and the freshwater shower. Now, if you turn that pump on, it's going to prime and pressurize that system. So as you need to flush the toilet, it'll have fresh water running. Or if you need to wash your hands in the sink or the shower, um, it would pressurize that system also. Wash down pump. This boat has a saltwater wash down pump. If you hit that switch, it'll pressurize your saltwater pump. You get one of those coiled up hoses, you install that, and you'll be able to spray off uh, fish scales, etc., off the boat. Um, your electronics. That's on a power switch here, so you have to give it power. Um, trim tabs, those always can stay on. So I like to keep the electronic switch and the, the trim tab switch on all the time. Those are you know, electronics that you need to be using quite a bit. They, they can remain on. Fish box one and fish box two. That'll uh, activate the macerator pump in your, your in-floor fish storage box. If you get any water, debris, fish guts, anything like that, you can just hit the button and it'll pump it overboard. Uh, you have two live wells in this boat. You have live well one here, and then you have live well two in the corner. So these switches will activate the pump to pump salt water into those live wells. Windless up, windless down, self-explanatory. The windless can be controlled from the dashboard or it can be controlled up front. Um, you can operate it from here easily. And then there's a button for your window. You do have a window vent in the windshield, and you can operate it in and out from there. The stereo is Bluetooth. Um, you can pair it to your phone if you're ever having any trouble initially pairing your Bluetooth. You may be doing something wrong. Easy troubleshoot is if you just take the, the model number on that Clarion and you just Google uh, pairing Bluetooth Clarion, it'll walk you through a quick step to troubleshoot to get you paired up. Um, most of our customers typically get that done right away. There's no issues. But if you do have problems, you can troubleshoot on the website. Um, you have a little glove box here with some power charge ports, stainless cup holders, 12 inch Garmin GPS's are installed in this one. Once you turn your electronic supply button on the dash, you could power up your GPS's. This is gonna be your Yamaha gauge that'll tell you your, your fuel burn, your fuel capacity, RPM, etc. With these larger boats, these are digital shift. So typically, Directly in line with the Yamaha logo will be neutral and you'll feel it click into place. If you push it into reverse down towards the floor, that'll put the motors in reverse. And then vice versa, if you push it forward, 
that'll put them in gear and propel the boat forward. Uh, this boat is equipped with a joystick and it has its Optimus joystick control system here. To operate the joystick, you hit the button that says take command. Okay, that'll make these uh, controls obsolete at that point to where all the power is running through the joystick. Now, if you want to go back to operating, say you're docking and the joystick's not doing what you want, simply put it, the boat back in gear with the manual uh, shifters and it will take over and override the joystick. You have your compass, you have some overhead storage. This boat is equipped with the VHF up there, it has its own button. Um, and that's basically it for the dash section of your brand new 302 Rabala. In the transom of this boat, you're going to have a battery bank storage box here in the floor. This is all guttered and sealed, so it will remain dry. This boat, the R302, has uh, two sets of batteries, a total of four batteries. This will remain nice and dry. You just want to make sure this is always latched to compress that and keep it dry. Under your fold-out seat here, you have access to the bilge. Now this boat has a battery charger standard, so you can maintain your batteries on shore power if need be with a three-prong extension cord. Um, it has a black waste holding tank for your toilet. You have a bilge pump. You have power steering pumps because this boat is equipped with the joystick. You have a salt water wash down pump, a fresh water wash down pump. You also have a bronze sea strainer to strain any seaweed out of your uh, seawater. You also have your Yamaha fuel filters accessible. Everything in this boat is very accessible. Now, as a boat owner, it's very important to understand where your through-hull ball valves are. Now, most boats are gonna have a live well system, so in turn, they will have a through-hull valve. Now, it's important to understand where those valves are on your boat in case of an emergency situation. Now, if you take a look down in the bilge here, you'll see we have a few valves. There's one here in the back, there's one here midship, and then there's another green handle in an emergency situation, all you would want to do is close those valves and that would isolate any water coming in to service those pumps. At that point, your bilge pump would be able to catch up and then you would determine where there's an error and you'd be able to fix it. The first step is close and isolate those ball valves. Now on the transom of your 302, there's a lot of components that you need to understand what they are. Right here, you have your freshwater shower. This will telescope out and you'll be able to rinse off. You do need to make sure that that fresh water switch is on on your dash to pressurize that pump. Right here is where you fill the fresh water tank. You simply unscrew that, put your garden hose in there and just let it run until it overflows. Over here is your salt water wash down. Now you would just get one of those coiled up hoses, thread it on there, flip the switch on the dashboard and you'll be able to spray any fish blood or scales off the boat and then this bezel here is your waste pump out most uh, marinas will have that service or at your fuel dock you simply pull up they unscrew it they shove a suction cup on top of it and it would uh, suck the waste out of the whole tank and then this is the cap for your three prong extension cord plug-in for your battery charger Again, you simply just take a normal extension cord, plug it in there, and it would maintain the batteries. Typically, that's a little overkill, but if you had a low, uh, low battery, you needed to maintain these batteries for a long period of time, that would be an excellent way to do so. In the head compartment of your R302, you have a freshwater sink. Again, to use that sink, you need to have the switch on on the dash for freshwater pressure. You also have a little bit of storage down beneath, and then you have your head. Now, to use the head, you can simply flip the switch. It's just like flushing a toilet at home. You can either add water to it or just a normal flush. That's as simple as flipping a switch. Now this boat is equipped with overboard discharge. Now you would need to open the valve for the overboard discharge, which would be labeled in your bilge. And then you would have to come in here and turn that key. Now you do need to be eight miles off of shore in order to do that legally. So. Eight miles off, you just open your valve, turn the key, and you'll be able to discharge any of that contents of the waste holding tank overboard. In the bow area of your Rabalo 302, behind this latch you have some garbage storage, stainless cup holders. You have storage under each compartment here. You have 
have the controls for your windlass. Again, you can control this windlass at the helm or up front. It's labeled with arrows up, down, pretty basic. Underneath the anchor lid, you have another saltwater washdown connection. So you would have to turn your saltwater pump on on the dash and then you would have a coiled up hose and be able to spray any mud off of your anchor. You do have a safety for your windlass. So first thing you wanna do is remove the safety cord and then you would be able to deploy your windlass. When you're not using your anchor, make sure your safety cord is always attached securely. Coming around in the deck, you have another storage compartment. Now your bow table and filler is stored down below. So you can see the bow table leg that would mount right to here. Simply pull that pull pin and it will lock into place. If you're not using the bow table and you want to use a filler, there's another leg down there that would lock into place to support the filler. And then your cushion would go on top of that. Stainless cup holders, then on this side you have a little more storage. And then midship on the port side is your fuel fill. Simply push the button, spring load of the cap will lift up, and then you can begin to fuel.